2. All right, so we have two bonds, bond P with a coupon rate of 8%, bond D with a coupon rate of 5%. Um, both bonds make annual payments and have yield to maturity of 6.5% and 10 years. What's the current yield for both of the bonds? Okay. Bond P, bond D. Okay, so the first thing is the coupon rate, uh, 8%. Five percent. It's an annual bond, so it only pays coupons once a year. I'm going to assume a face value of hundred dollars on this. We could have put a thousand dollars. We could put ten thousand dollars. We could put twenty. We could put any number. Um, I just chose a hundred because on the last example I chose a thousand, and I wanted to do something different. You can literally, you could even put a dollar here, and it would work. Okay, your coupon is just going to be your interest rate times your face value. Let's add some decimals. Okay, years to maturity is 10. Oops. 10 on both of them. The current yield to maturity is 6.5%. So notice what information we have about this bond. We have the payments. Oh, and remember, we only use the coupon payment once. We don't need to use it again. I'm going to make it white so we don't think about it. We have these payments of eight and five dollars that occur for the next 10 years at the end of the year and then we get a hundred dollars back. We have a current interest rate so the only thing that we need to figure out is the price. Well the price is the present value of these. Our rate is 6.5 percent. We have 10 years. Our payment is eight dollars and our future value is a hundred. Okay, so let me just point something out first. This was an 8% coupon bond. The current yield to maturity is 6.5%. So what happened was our bond was issued at 8%. The interest rate went down in the subsequent time periods and it's now 6.5%. So when the rate goes down, the price goes up. This bond is trading at a premium and we know that because 110 is greater than $100. Bond D, the discount bond, is has a coupon rate of 5%, and after the bond was issued, the market rate changed to 6.5%. When interest rates go up, price goes down. This one's trading at a discount. Okay, <clears throat> so the first question is current yield. The current yield is just going to be the coupon divided by, and since price is negative, I'm going to put a negative in front of that just to make it a a normal number. 7.2% and 5.6%. All I did was coupon divided by uh, the negative price. And you'll notice that that is the answer. Okay, so the next question is, if the interest rates remain unchanged, what's the expected capital gains yield over the next year for bond P and bond D? So the only thing, let's call this price time equals now. Price time equals one year, one year from now. And the only thing that we have to do differently is just do the same PV with the same rate because the rate doesn't change. The number of periods is not 10, but nine. The payment is $8 on this coupon. The face value is zero. Do the same thing for the other bond. Notice that this is a negative, like the way that we've typed the formula, but I'm selling the bond for that much. So here I bought the bond, I spent $110, and I'm selling it for $109. So this is going to be a loss. And this I bought for $89 and I sold for $90. That's going to be a gain. So the difference here is going to be, and I'm going to put a minus in front of the 110, minus 109. Notice that'll give me 80 cents, so that is my gain. I mean, my loss. I'm sorry, I should not have put a minus there. That's way, no, that's not right.
How about a plus? I got it. Okay, there we go. 80 cents. And the way that I did that is um, the price one plus the price two, which is a negative. So if I had put that, if it, it's already a negative, so I don't have to do anything extra. I just have to add them together. And then I divide it by my initial amount. And because that's a negative, I'm going to put a negative in front. So actually, it shouldn't be a negative because it'll be a loss. Let's put that as a percent and make it bigger. 0.721. So that's what we have there. And let me walk you through the logic again because I had to think about that way too much. Um, we took our the money that we made in time one and we added our negative cash flow. In other words, we subtracted 110 and then we divided it by 110. And so we got a uh, loss of something like 80 cents and when we divided it by the 110 that we paid we ended up with a capital gain of it should be a negative negative 0.721 and usually what would have happened is the numerator turns out to be a negative so it's usually like I lost five dollars on a hundred dollar investment um, and it should look like that and for whatever reason I'm not doing the math very well um, Yeah, so anyway, that's how you do that. Copy and paste that over, and you get a gain of 0.896%. <clears throat> and again, the way that we know that is that your price at, uh, at time zero is $89, so that's an outflow of 89. We made 90 on it, so we're going to have a positive capital gain of the difference between those two. That is not the most eloquent way that I've ever stated it, um, but this is a loss because we lost money on the bond, and this is a gain because we gained money, and the difference between these two, which is 70 cents or 80 cents or whatever, is the solution. Well, the difference divided by the price that we pay now is the capital gain, uh, and we notice that that is 0.90 almost.